dime bag. He wants to be buried. Well, not, I guess the family wants him buried in a kiss coffin. Out of respect, maybe that. it was in his uh, will or something. Was he a big kiss fan? I guess one right? of those kiss coffins. Gene Simmons is. Uh, oh, we forgot to talk about China too. Oh my How much God, are they charging so to do? I thought Gene Simmons was maybe calling in today, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, him and Tom Cruise. That was actually on the list. Was it today? Gene Simmons. Yeah, in the email. Oh, I, I think said. I did see that. Oh, all right. We have a better chance of Gene Simmons, J E A N, the actress, <laughs> calling in. Oh, my God. <laughs> Didn't that used to confuse you? Yep. Reading TV Guide, it's like a movie with Gene Simmons in it. Wow, I didn't know he did movies in 1958. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are the uh, celebrity guests stacking up? Uh, ben, have we. Have we do, well, who's the Tom Cruise of today? That Well, we had Tommy Chong yesterday. That was pretty cool. I thought it was a really cool interview. It was yeah. great. And uh, today we got what? Gene Simmons Gene calling in? Gene Simmons. Who loves Gene me. Remember Simmons. him yelling at me? Why'd he yell at you? Because I was moving that? carts next to Opie. Well, don't do w. that when Gene's talking. Why are you doing that? Yeah, he gets all uh, angry. All, all he got mad because my off. chair's squeaking. All trying to sound articulate. And then meanwhile... Yeah. Articulate, though. Bastard. He and Smart then he's guy. showing Opie his Kiss credit card. Remember that? Was, yeah. Uh, I could turn you on to a credit card with a low interest rate. It's wonderful. Like, What? Because, yes, the KISS credit card. And he shows you he's got the KISS credit cards. I love Gene. He's just such a... I don't know. We got and you can't even call him out on it because he agrees with it. Well, he's 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 probably such the most sellout. honest celebrity in Hollywood. All he does... Honest sellout? Well, he just tells the truth about everything, which I like. You know, he just wants to dump loads and bang different chicks, and he doesn't care who knows it. Good for him. He yeah. won't get married. Never yell at our Ben again, though. I don't, I don't like that. that either, but... He's one of my boyhood idols, and I creaked my chair, and he glared at me, and I'm like, oh, sorry. Hey, Martini oh. Steve, you, we can clear the phone lines. We're done with uh, Jim the Boat Guy for now, unless a lady calls. Martini Steve, back yeah. in the studio. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, you got the uh, Gene Simmons lecture tour audio. What's this all about? Gene Simmons of KISS went off to do a lecture tour in Australia. I think it was three or five dates, and he basically is doing this Tony Robbins type of... Uh, Thank you, I'm right in the middle of what Steve is saying. <laughs> Thought I was going to uh, get away with it at that time. Um, anyway. God, completely fucking derails me. I every know. time. So <laughs> 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 uh, it. All right. So Gene's now decided to do this um, this this lecture tour. Right. What? Uh, just to... Well, he... Yes, Jim? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you're a professional broadcaster. Come on, What's All right. Wrong? You're absolutely right. Oh, my was that real? Oh. Uh, what was real? What? Jim farted. Yeah, oh. Jim just blew one out. It was like loud, Did like audible it? fart. <laughs> so Gene is doing this uh, lecture I'll tour. You. you know he's got some flaming shoes. The kind of pyro would admire. He makes contestants spring in food And he runs the founder music empire Martini Steve's clothes are on fire Martini Steve's clothes are on fire He only buys flaming attire His clothing's like a barbecue His laundry never needs a dryer if you're selling burning shoes, this drunken Lebanese will buy them. Martini Steve's clothes are on fire. Martini Steve's clothes are on fire. He only buys flaming attire. Great job by Anthony. Oh, Fine parody. Oh, the Martini Steve song. 
and and just to see Steve hear the song, and I'm looking at Steve, and he is indeed on fire. I told you I would overcompensate today, so I have the flaming boots, the flaming hat, and the flaming shirt. When are you going to get like, the flaming itself? pants? And the flaming lifestyle. I have... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's still in the closet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, flaming pants. He's not Jonas. kidding anyone anymore. I don't know where to get flaming pants, to be honest with you. No. I've looked. I, I wouldn't know where. I, would, I had no idea where to get them, but I'm sure if I All looked. Right. So, anyway. back to the Gene Simmons audio. Yeah. So, Gene's doing a lecture tour, or he oh, has yeah, done yeah. a lecture tour where he preaches his Caligula lifestyle to an auditorium full of people, and in my opinion, does a very convincing job of doing so. Because here's a guy who's worth $100 million, has a 30 year run in the music business, owns his own record company, his own film company, has published two books, continues to bring in revenue, and this is just now another revenue stream. Isn't so, it more of a fluke, though, than a. Something Gene really built like a businessman would have to... I don't know. It seems kind of like if it wasn't for his a bunch of his dopey fans buying anything this guy puts out... Sure. Uh, you know, he's got a license to print money is pretty much what it is. Well, essentially, yeah. You've, he built one solid revenue stream with the band, and that gives him the opportunity to fuel cash into other revenue streams. But he's also a very good salesperson and convinces other people to invest money into his ideas. I mean, when when he, you hear him talk about, especially on this um, in in this lecture tour about um, uh, banks giving him five hundred million dollars of rotating credit to produce films internationally, I mean, you know, that's that's not because he's the bass player for Kiss. That's because he's a good salesman and convinced them that he could do it. And don't for, and don't forget to look how many rock bands burn out and have nothing and blow their money and and wind up with shit. I mean, he is a bright guy, man. Yeah, but the, he's got that base of fans that sure. will just buy any piece of crap. And he goes around like a, a searching for people that are selling his wares without a license. But other bands try to do that, and they weren't as successful. They can't as do it. It's because the, name another fans band that was able to, to market themselves the way Kiss did, or just Gene Simmons that did. Passionate fan base, and for some reason, Kiss has it. For Kiss some has some reason. They always delivered, though. Kiss always delivered with stuff like that. Like you see them live, they're phenomenal. They, they always push produce. you down the stairs later on. They're there <laughs> hug you, they love you, make you. you feel well, better. The reason is because they just look like superheroes, you know? That I think that had a, a lot to do with it. And the, the prevailing rumor is that they're basically going to dump the personalities behind all the makeup and just franchise the band out into, uh, a, I guess, a glorified cover act. You, it doesn't. The thought being that it doesn't really matter who's under the makeup. You could put anybody in those four oh, kabuki man. masks. So, so they're going to put... <laughs> Put out Kiss franchises, yeah, and sell it as Kiss. Like Kiss will be performing live. Yeah, it's it's it hasn't been confirmed, but that's a rumor that's been going around for a couple of years. I don't people, think so either. People like the personalities. People like Paul Stanley and Gene and Pe people miss. Why don't Ace. You say I? I like. Well, and the whole well, world likes them. Well, this uh, brings uh, back a discussion we've had on on many occasions. Uh, a lot of these bands are going to go on forever. Uh huh. They're just going to go on forever. You know, you fast forward twenty twenty five years and. There's going to be uh, a, a version of, let's say, the Rolling Stones or, or you know, these With bands. With one are, guy left. Uh, uh, some of these bands are going on. They don't even have any original members left anymore. But the name is still, uh, you know, marketable. The name, yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, we, we mentioned a bunch of the bands. I can't remember right now. But just think of all the bands you, you know and love. Yeah, Skinner. There's a perfect example. I think they're down to one original member. One or two, yeah. And they still tour. And they still tour as Under Leonard, Leonard Skinner. Skinner. Yeah. Sabbath did it with Iomi. Like after, like at one point, it all left. It was just Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iomi mm -hmm. when everybody else had left. It's like it's just not the same. But it, it's gonna, yeah. But some of these bands will be able to pull it off, and it, it, the the name of the band will actually just keep going on and on and on, even though all the original members are gone. Kiss won't, huh? No, you, I mean, well, you figure if you scale it down and you put it in casinos. Why not? So you're playing to auditoriums rather than Ooh. stadiums. It's still a revenue stream. Well, cover bands. I mean, yeah, but cover bands. I mean, there's going to be like oh, Joe's U2 band. I mean, there's always going to be cover bands. Yeah. And they could say Kiss supports or franchise them, but they're not going to be billed as Kiss. That's the point, though. These would. In no, theory. It would never Kiss sell. Kiss 2, you know? Kiss squared. You Kiss know? cube. Yo. They're touring now with 50% of the original band and two other guys in, in Aces and Peter's makeup. Yeah, and they're still go. filling huge venues. But they've been doing that since 1980. Because Ace left, right? Like, what was it? I think Ace left first or Peter left? Peter left first. Peter uh, left first. And, and like around 79, 80, after the Dynasty thing, they kind of had uh, most of their guys, two of their guys gone anyway. So they've been doing that for 25 but years. But you think they could ever pull it off without uh, Gene or, Never. or Paul? Never. One or the other leaves Absolutely and not. it's just Gene I Simmons? Or, uh, they... You have that argument with Leonard Skinner and they're still selling out like crazy. Don't forget that they don't have a 30-year history like Kiss does with Gene and Paul either. 
I mean, they were great letters getter, but kid, the thirty years. Been yeah, but slowly Paul. but surely, then Paul Stanley leaves the band. I mean, he just had he had hip replacement surgery uh, recently. Did, did he really? He, yeah, he did have some kind of surgery. I'm and not so sure let's let's say all of a sudden he decides to retire. Then it's down to Gene Simmons, and then the other guys start making a name for themselves in the band. And then all of a sudden Gene steps aside. Then there you go. You got another band with four yeah. uh, uh, members that weren't original, and the that's name that's goes that's on. Transitional phase where you got some of the original guys and some new guys. Right. Ooh. I don't know. Vinnie Vincent they had. Mm -hmm. Eric Carr for a long time. Well, he died. You really yeah, no, I know, know, I know. You know about Kiss? Well, I mean, you know what, though? I'm more of an old school Kiss fan. I like the original. The only one I haven't met is Ace. I'm, I'm actually an original four guys. Yeah. You know, my um, Jeff, what's up? Hey, I heard on, uh, or heard, I read on GlideMagazine.com that uh, Queen is going to be playing with Paul Rogers as vocals. Really? From Bad Company? Yeah, Bad Company and Three. That's awful. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that Queen didn't go on. Why? I, well, That's I know kind of a hard guy to replace. Well, yeah, I understand that, but you know, a lot of the other bands have, have attempted it with new singers. I was well, I was surprised they never tried it. Nirvana never did. I mean, those guys went on to other projects, but that was the end of the band. I mean, you know, it's like when well, the least Kurt Cobain was the whole band. Same those, with Queen. Those guys. I mean, uh, Dave Dave Grohl uh, proved that he was an incredibly talented guy, but Kurt Cobain never wanted to hear his songs or anything like that. He could care less about them. He just said, "Shut up and you know, drum my songs." Yeah. You know, the first Foo Fighters album with Dave Grohl was a lot of songs that uh, Dave brought to Kurt Cobain for Nirvana, and Kurt was like, ah, this is garbage. <laughs> Oops. And it turns out that, you know, he was writing some really good stuff that could have become uh, could have been uh, some nice Nirvana songs. And so Kurt Chris Novoselic little... really uh, took off and went to... Uh... Yeah. He, he, <laughs> what? You know. Yeah. It, uh, Where? He was uh, just a uh, really good friend with Play uh, the Kurt. bass and shut up. So Kurt was pompous about his music with the, even the other band members. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all about... He wrote just about everything. Just about All everything. about me. Bands changing members. Yeah, here's another one. Um, yes. Big Ed on Long Island. What's up, Big Ed? Hey, guys. Hi, Sweetum. Hi, Big Ed. Thanks for calling the program. I love you, baby. You Program. guys suck. You know, talking about all these bands changing members, look at Yes. They stink. Yeah, but John Anderson. How many times did they change members over and over and over again? I mean, there was nobody in the original band there, and they still called it Yes. Uh, John Anderson. Was he there the whole time? I don't know. That's a good I don't question. Know either. I don't think he was. Yeah, but that's different, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you guys suck. I'm out of here, my fella. Uh, and you know, I was going to say this. Uh, we'll let Jeremiah say it in California. Go, go, go ahead, Jeremiah. Hey, little Jimmy. Hi, Jeremiah. How you doing, sweet cheeks? Better now, thanks. <laughs> you just made a comment that Leonard Skinner didn't have a 30 year history like Kiss. I, I no, no. I mean with. With the two guys like Gene and Paul, what I'm, what I'm saying is Gene and Paul have been at the forefront of Kiss for 30 years. Whereas, I mean, Leonard Skinner, how long were they together before the, the plane crash? Like five years or something? Or six years? Yeah, it was like, well, it was closer to 10. Yeah. Um, Ronnie Van Zant, the plane crashed in like 76 or 77. 70, it was 77. Okay, 77. But <clears throat> after that, there were a lot of the original members, and it was Ronnie Van Zant's brother, Johnny, that came in and started singing. Yeah, and he's been After singing. He he's been singing with them for over ten years now already. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess. No, I, my but, point. My point was just that Gene and Paul are irreplaceable in that band, and I think you know Ronnie Van Zant probably you could consider irreplaceable, even though they technically did. But Skinner was no one thinks of Skinner after '77, really. I mean, that's, that's not true. They're, they're still huge in the South, they're, absolutely they're huge. Yeah. But how many songs were Skinner music. songs? And they actually uh, mm, they put out a, a bunch of songs since, and a couple of them had, had, had gotten some good radio airplay. Really, yeah, he's right. it's I not like name it's, one of them. I can't either. No, I can't either. But I, I just know, uh, you know, it, it's no Freebird or anything like that. Yeah. Sure, but they did put out albums, and a couple of them made the radio and and, and got some airplay. No, no, I'm so. not saying they didn't. But I'm saying like when you think Leonard Skinner, you think whether well, Sweet Home Alabama. You Think you think you know Van Dan, Ronnie Van Dan? Mm -hmm. This is what. Right. No, I wasn't trying to argue with you. I just. No, no, I'm actually, point. I'm actually, oh, right. I'm, I'm actually Thank you. countering Ope's point here on point counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> Jason from New Hampshire, what's up, Jason? What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to say, you know why Queen didn't continue? Why? They couldn't find their shit dick with a set of choppers like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys wow. keep tempting me to play that damn song. Freddie yeah. Mercury, shit dick. Shit dick. I love the part when he goes, Judas Priest, shit dick. And he kind of sings it like The heavy Alfred. metal <laughs> yeah. shit dick vocals. <laughs> you still uh, can't find I, your I, shit dick song? Ben wants, oh, Oprah's looking for something. I think somebody better help him. Eric is the ben only one. Ben will come over. Herc Eric is the only one. Yeah, knock all the CDs over. Those are the Christmas pile, dude. All right. 
Yeah. Eric yeah. is the only one that knows where it is. I'm telling you right now. There it is. Ben found it. All right, I'm sorry. Why can't we have some kind of a neat yeah. thing over there for Opie? No, ben we're, we're gonna found <laughs> shit dick. <laughs> Come on. You know, Ben. Because it's all about timing. Turkey dick. <laughs> Small phone. Come on, 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 come on. Quick, quick music interlude. That's becoming wow. a classic what? on the Opie and Anthony show, huh? Who doesn't love the shit dick song? <laughs> God, we get so many requests for that stupid song oh, every day. You, you love that one, huh, Jimmy? It's hilarious. Yeah, we, uh, we'll make a copy of that for you. And even after you stop laughing, you still kind of enjoy the song. Like, I, I, Dan, I, I, It has a nice Dan. little feel to it, right? Yeah, I don't... Look, right. Drive around going, Dan, hey, shit dick. Yeah, DC, what's up? Yeah, man, what's up? How you doing, Jimmy? shit dick? Look at shit dick. Uh, ACDC lead singer. Uh, I believe it's been replaced once or twice, hasn't he? No, Brian Johnson Brian came Johnson. after Bon Scott. I don't think there's any, anyone else. No. Yeah, just Brian there Johnson. Go. But there's very a, successful. There. Yeah, there's another example. I mean, all right. So then, let's say the rest I'm of the guys, guys the rest it. of the guys leave. Brian Johnson uh, continues. That now you got a, a band that's very successful that has no original members. Oh, true. Sabbath replaced Ozzy. I mean, look, Dio came along. Wasn't the same though, but they still replaced him and went on and were very successful. Did well. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's uh, get back to the Gene Simmons audio, Steve. Okay. Well, he's that's touring, right. right? That's what we were doing. What's that? No, he's touring. And we're going to have Gene Simmons call on the show later. Yeah, a little bit later. All right. So we got uh, some clips of his lecture tour, right? Yeah. These. This was um, maybe six Australia. months ago in Australia, in front of a lot of people. Good actually. Lecture. And Thank now you. is he selling this lecture? Yeah. It's called. Uh, what is it called? Speaking in tongues is the name of the DVD. Oh, and it's. In. Yeah, exactly. Now everything is a is a t is a is, is a play on the whole kiss and big tongue thing. Of course it is. Well, that's how you market it. He knows the kiss is what made him famous, so he's he's happy to tie it in in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And if people want to buy it, they buy it. I mean, and and that's the I, I think that misconception is, is is that he's not you know you can't force anybody to buy something. So if he wants to put a five thousand dollar kiss coffin on the market and see if anybody buys it, well, he sold one. Yeah, <laughs> but where's true. That? Oh yeah, right. Where's, is, a, where's that a misconception? Though? Nobody thinks people are being forced to buy kiss well, products. What? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of the fans feel jip. They're like, stop selling stuff. Yeah, you I know, think people... they feel like, you know, it's selling out. Like it's, But he's so beyond selling yeah, out. This is so far, you know, above and beyond the realm of selling out. He's not telling anybody they have to spend their money on it. He's just putting it on the market. If they buy it, they buy it. I don't think he's selling out, though. <laughs> Are you insane? I'm ah, buying I in. I, I like, uh, I always like the Kiss uh, merchandise. I really do. It's fun. Yeah, but it's it it is a sellout. A bit much. If you look at it, the standards of other bands that are like, no man, we're not selling our music or our, you know, Kiss takes a whole nother direction there. And but then what's the point of forming a band if if you're just going to form a band and remain impoverished? 
then but, you know do it in your spare time. Some of them seem to want that. The second they get mm-hmm. any success, their fans and sometimes even the band gets a little aggravated. Yeah, by all means, uh, that's, 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 sellouts. Yeah, that's BS. It's not, like, I think every band wants to be absolutely huge, and they play mm-hmm. it the other way. Like, oh man, we're getting, you know we're getting too commercial. We hate it. Blah blah blah. I know. Yeah, I think every I'd band starts in out in a garage wanting to become huge rock stars. Yeah. Yeah, and why else would and, you do it? And if they're if they're saying uh, if they're telling you differently, then they're they're just not they're not true to themselves, and they're, they're liars. So. Yeah, you know, true. You're right. Yeah, or you just stay in the garage. Yeah, exactly, and get a day job, and you know, make a livable wage. Although the fans are ridiculous sometimes. You know, you get into a band that's a little underground, you know, and then they get popular, uh, and you start getting pissed at the band. Like, yeah, you're so commercial. But the truth of the matter is, you're pissed off because you thought you were so hip yep. and so cool that you knew about this band, and then you realize that you're just another guy Absolutely. that was into mm-hmm. a sound that was very commercial. Just so happened that uh, you you were you on to a earlier. little earlier. This is what a deluded idiot I am. I would always hear a song, and I could always kind of tell, like, wow, that's going to be a hit. I would pick hits. And I'm like, wow, I have a knack for that. And then it dawned on me. Hey, asshole, it becomes a hit because everybody thinks the same thing when they right. hear it. <laughs> Does you mean Norton like this? Insightful genius. Everyone goes, hey, that's a toe tapper, and it becomes a hit. Scored. So, yeah. I can identify those hits. <laughs> yeah, I really can. See, there's another one. Just me and a billion other people who enjoy <laughs> the same song. <laughs> but that's just my insight. Fool I am. Yeah, it's what it is. It's self-centered people that get a little pissed off because they thought they were special. But anything you do, and as a band especially, people say you're going commercial. Any Metallica, it was Lars was criticizing Napster. He was a sellout. Gene does this, he's a sellout. Like whatever you do, they call you that. Unless you die young, that's the only way you're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dimebag even. Look, I mean, as heavy as he was or whatever, this guy, this maniac called. He's a sellout or whatever he called him for leaving the band. Whatever you do, shit they don't like. That's what they use. It's annoying. Nice to know that there are kooks for every occasion. Absolutely. Even that guy. All right. Well, let's listen to some of this Gene Simmons audio from the lecture tour. And, uh, and, uh, and that's that. Gene. When I was a little boy, I felt completely destroyed. I was completely sort of devastated by the notion that even though somebody never really knew who I am, they were willing to tell me that I was stupid. What are you, stupid? Can't you even speak English? I felt devastated when I first heard that. Nobody is allowed to take you down without your permission. Nobody's allowed to insult you without your permission. Nobody can say anything bad about you unless you agree with it. I know it's, a, it's an idea they don't teach you in school. So I thought about this and I said, well, I'm not stupid. I know I can't speak English, so maybe I don't have language skills. But no, I'm not stupid. And one day I'm going to make sure you, asshole, are going to work for me. If he didn't understand English, how did he know what somebody said to him <laughs> Good about point. speaking English? Yeah, he's a little weird. What does that mean? That Because you, you, you know why? Because you're, you're preaching to a very insecure crowd of people that probably got called names. And this guy thinks that he's going to... He, he's he's going to tell you not to believe what people tell you, you know. And here's a guy that's worth a hundred million dollars saying that. It's so. a little easy for him. He's Gene yeah, Simmons, exactly. But I, I what does I, that mean though? You can't allow people. It's, it's only it's, you could allow people to call you stupid and call you names if you don't it's, allow it. It's a very ass backwards way of saying it's only an insult if you buy into it kind of thing. It's oh, only you know it. sticks and stones may break my bones kind of thing. Yeah, it's easy when you're taking the kiss limo into your gated house. True. To get away from that, but he's selling this to... What does this cost? What is the DVD? I got the $15 DVD, I think. That's it? Because yeah. I know those uh, courses that people teach, uh, oh, motivational sure. courses. Oh, I'm, I'm sure a ticket was... I'm, I'm sure a ticket to this was not like Probably 100 a hundred bucks. Money. Yeah, exactly. This is more about Gene wanting to... Gene likes to talk. I think he likes to hear With himself. his mouth full, I'm like sorry. you, <laughs> fucking slob. I'm sorry. Stop feeding your face. I'm, I'm eating an apple. I'm being healthy. Listen, crunchy apple, good for big boy. Big boy eats his apple. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk after the next clip. Let me show you. Uh, All right, let me uh, do the next clip here. Mothers are the most amazing things on the face of the planet, and I hope you love yours as much as I love mine. That's forever. She gave me life, and she's the only one that ever had the right and continues to always have the right as long as I'm alive to ask me where I'm going, who I've been with, and when I come home. Hmm. Anti-marriage. Yeah, yeah well, we all know he's yeah. anti-marriage. Well, that's the I, next clip, which I love. I agree with him on that, uh, that whole His thing. His theory on marriage is great. Yeah. Want to go right to it? Sure. I believe that what everybody should do is to sit down before you get married and make a list out. 
What do I want from you and what do you want from me? Don't let the laws of the land dictate to you because here's what's going to happen. And you're going to get what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. I'm going to tell you the exact opposite for women. Okay. Marriage. I hope I scared you because it scares the shit out of me. And my, you know, like the sumo wrestlers, my balls get caught, pulled right back into my body. And that's not good. So you're going out on your first date and you get serious and you want to get married. And so the guy says to the girl, listen, I want to be completely honest with you. I really love you with all my heart and I won't do the jokes. I'm just going to be serious. I want to spend perhaps the rest of my days with you. I don't know, but on the chance, and statistics bear this out, you will get divorced. On the chance that we might get divorced or that I might turn to bestiality. If we get divorced, how much money would you like from me? Half. <laughs> she might say, that's so unromantic, I don't want to... You better run the fuck out of that room now. You just run as fast as you can, because when honesty goes out the window, you got to reach deep down inside. As I understand it, the laws of divorce, because the biggest cause of divorce is marriage, right? See, it goes hand in hand. So the cost of divorce, as I'm told, is 50% of your gross pre-tax dollars to somebody you just met as a grown-up and decide to spend a few years with if you get divorced. This is more than the woman who gave you birth will ever get your mother. Who invented that system? And additionally, if you have a child together, whatever, there's another 20%. So 70%, I'm told here, in America it's only 50 of your gross pre-tax dollars is going to go to another human being. That's more than the taxes you pay to the government you live in. Now, by the way, Australia gives you nuclear armed forces, police, military, a, an infrastructure, highways, fire, everything, and access to as many females as you want. They'll never say when you're coming home and who have you been with. By the way, you still have to pay the tax, whether you get divorced or not. She will still get her 50 to 70 percent. Your mom will get crap. And you, the guy that earned all the money, is like, what do you get? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Man. Bravo. Has he ever been married? No. No, he's got... Smart guy. He's, got, he's figured out a way. I actually had this conversation when he was at NEW. He's got a cohab agreement, a cohabilitation agreement. It's a contract that you draw up with somebody who you want to live with that is in every way, shape, and form similar to marriage, but it doesn't bind you legally, financially to the same... Isn't that great? If you spout off like that enough, and you're in the public eye enough, it's not something that you get uh, rejected for when you present it to a Absolutely. woman. Absolutely. Right. Like, it's known. Like, any chick that's with Gene Simmons is not going to go, oh, you know, like he said, that's so unromantic, or why, you know, you don't love me. Is that... She's with Gene Simmons, who is known for this. How right. Do you, how do you swing that? As a guy. I'll bet you right. Shannon Tweed, if they split, would get something, but I mean, not she ain't Probably it. based no. on what he felt he would wanted to give her. Then it would still be plenty of money. Although I'm sure that uh, his brilliant speaking things, when done in a court in California, might not work quite as well in front of a judge. <laughs> your Honor, I think that, uh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Have your lawyer speak. Yeah. Lawyer dressed as uh, Paul Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be something. You all come into court. Don't tug on anybody's shirt sleeve to find out if it's okay to be happy while you're alive. If that means making more money and getting more girls and girls, if it means getting more guys, do it. If everybody gets pissed off, who cares? The idea is you have responsibility to yourself to make yourself happy. All right. Well, I is he talking about just all the chicks he's with and yeah, no exactly. commitment? Exactly. So he basically just spouts off for a couple hours and tells people, you know, how he justifies living his existence, mm -hmm. you know, in in the in the way he does. And, and they pay to see this. And they pay to see this. The one unreal, the, the, the unreal, realistic thing is, you know, especially with the girls, he's had such a huge pool of women to draw from for for twenty five, thirty years. That yeah. how can he equate himself, or how can you transcend that? knowledge or that wisdom to somebody who's right. making you know yeah you're 30 grand you're, you know you're joe car salesman you're not uh picking up yeah, women that's like gene hysterical <laughs> some kiss geek is sitting there listening to gene talk about how you swing three four women at a time he can't get one date exactly i raised that when we interviewed gene at new i actually mentioned that very politely of course of course but how do you it, being a kiss it's a little easier to tell girls i'm not going to be monogamous i'm going to go out and do what i want and then you know meanwhile the regular schmuck can't i, I want to see other people she's yeah. like fuck you and you're yeah. finished Kind of, you can't live by kiss rules. I live by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, that's a good point. You kiss can't live rules. by kiss rules. 
you try and try, but you just can't. Yes. And if you want to talk on a little telephone and jerk all over the place, that's perfectly your prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to gossip about Boston, <laughs> you could be herky or jerky. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one. No one has the right to tell you to comb your hair except for your mother. <laughs> right. Fifty percent of your hair is going one way, and fifty percent is going the other way. And your scalp is in the middle going, what do you want from me? <laughs> oh, ben. Well, it's a sporty shirt, well, Ben. Yeah. That is nice, Diesel. Everyone's wearing their warm weather clothing today. Yes. Especially Steve. I think we're done with the Gene Simmons thing. Yeah. It'll be fun to chat with him. But yeah, he's supposed to be on uh, on the phone. What are the odds that we're, we're getting him? Oh, no, this, one's, this one will happen. He'll call. Oh, it will. What yeah. time? 930. 930. All right. And, and also, then what about these? We got the girls from The Apprentice. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. And I hear they're a bunch of... Uh, Do they have XM? A bunch of... <laughs> I heard they've been difficult to deal with. Uh, a little bit. I'm hearing they're a bunch of biatches. You never know, though. What's going on with these girls? I don't even know them. I don't watch the show. This should be interesting. Yeah, this should be an awful interview. Have you watched the show, Jimmy? <laughs> He's just the Apprentice? Like, Dude. Get out of here. Lucky uh, I've seen Opie, have Marsh. you watched it? Nope. Ben? Nope. This will Steve? be a complete oh, no. train wreck. No, I've seen it. I know who they are. I, They're I've in here. Seen, They're in Maxim. They're in... I've seen no. clips. All right, so why are they coming on the show? Elizabeth? Plugging Maxim, probably. Ivana and Stacy R. They pick her just because of her name. Like Donald had to deal ben, with Ben, question Ivana. for you. Why are they coming on the air? I believe ben. they want to do something with XM. If Eric knows better than I do. They want to do something with XM. and uh, I don't know. They're driving everyone crazy. They're driving Eric nuts. Eric, Ope has a question. Eric, why are they coming on our show? Um, and how difficult have they been? I haven't talked to the other two. One of them has been very difficult. Which, which one? Which one? Uh, Stacy R. Stacy R. She actually hung up on me on Friday because she was too busy jogging to talk about getting this stuff squared away. Hung up on you? Yeah. She's Which like, well, is... I don't have time to deal with this. Call me later, and, and or I'll get in touch with you and hung up. She's like, I'm busy jogging. Okay. Do these girls realize their 15 minutes of fame is just about up? No. Well, now let's see what happens in the interview. Now let's not prejudge negatively. With 26. Them. So what do they uh, what do they expect to do for XM Satellite Radio? A apparently, radio show? Th apparently they uh, they have a talk show that's been pitched down, and uh, DC said, "Well, if uh, before we go any further, we're going to throw you on Opie and Anthony and see how you do." Oh, this is almost like an audition for them. So they have to be nice. I'm sure hey, let them sit no, there. We and we'll give them the show this, for a couple of minutes. This seems like a perfect show for the little doggy uh, company. <laughs> yeah. Let them have the They're girls. I don't know. This I, stuff never works. Do like a prison visit or something. You guys are being like negative Nellies. I think this could go very well. And you, you, sometimes you think that someone's going to be difficult. And they turn out to be fantagious. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. It's three girls that want to do a radio show for XM Satellite Radio, and they're coming in here to talk to us for some reason. And none of us have seen The Apprentice. Oh, I know exactly who they are. Because it's, uh, it's a, a bunch of crap, that show. No, it's not. Elizabeth, Ivana, and Aunt Stacey, they're very good. The you show. have no clue who these people are. Not true at all. I definitely know. Elizabeth was eliminated in the fifth week, I remember. It was a whole big thing. It's written here on the sheet. I didn't even see the sheet. <laughs> I didn't only, even see it. The only reason you know something about them is because you want to live in the Trump building. No, I'm not. I'm never going to live in the Trump ben, building. He doesn't know anything about that. No, I know he doesn't. All right. Who doesn't want to live in the Trump building? It's everyone's dream. Every little boy's dream is to live next door to Kiss. And they <laughs> knock on your door. Uh, Lots of shows still to do on the way. Gene Simmons calling the program, and uh, and uh, I guess three girls from The Apprentice stopping by oh. to say hi. Rob, what's up? Hey, guys, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown on who you have coming on the show. Okay. okay. We got uh, Elizabeth, um, yeah. Ivana, and Stacy R. Go ahead. Okay. Well, first, um, you got to ask Ivana about, she strips the stuff. She's what? She strips the stuff. Uh, on the show, she uh, tried to get her team to win by stripping, and it didn't work. She strips? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe she's um, a little more loose. All right. Not as uptight. Uh, Elizabeth, she's really hot. She's kind of flaky, but she's pretty cool. Okay. Um, that, that's so, really so going to help us, by the way. Thank you. Uh, well, hold on. You know, I'm she's getting there. She's hot uh, but flaky. All right. Hot but flaky. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stacy R, uh, play the C word alert. Oh, really? Oh, boy. Why? Oh, big time C. Oh, we'll call her a bitch. All right. Well, okay. So we got a but bitch, definitely. a girl that likes to strip. 
and uh, someone who's hot but flaky, right? Yes. Yep. And Why the hell are we talking to these girls today? I don't know. Ben oh was like, God. no, we got to talk to him. We got to oh, talk wow. to him. Who's that? Maria. Oh, oh, hi, Maria. Maria. <laughs> Where are you calling from? <laughs> Thanks for calling the program. What's up? <laughs> Maria, help us out here. Everyone knows the show is mediocre at best today. Yeah, you gotta we help us stink out. today. Let's go. What? <laughs> Maria, See, what do you have trivia. for the show? Oh. Um, well, that guy called up before about Stacy R from The Apprentice. Stacy R yeah. from The Apprentice, who's making an appearance on the show today, and we we uh, could give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Big C. What? He described her as a big C. Who uh, did? Well, the last caller, sure. Yeah. Doesn't even start. Like, good friggin' luck today with her. Really? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, was, thank you, Anthony. <laughs> All right. So so wow. she's a real bitch, huh? Yeah. That's her character. No. So she's the witchy one. Like, stay out of her way. <laughs> well, this whole thing's been a soap opera for about a week. I've been getting updates from, uh, do we call him the Birdman? The Birdman. Eric the Birdman. He's he had to deal with her off and on for the last week and Norton put it all in perspective. He said they're game show contestants. That's the new celebrity because of reality shows. He says all that, but he still wants to get his photo with him. So what if Stalin walked in, I'd say, uh, you know, hi, can I have a picture with you? Be a great shot to have. Yeah, dude, I, you know me. I, but I make no bones about it. I, don't, I warm up for a no second. No bones about it, by gum. I know, yeah. Forgive my, pardon my French, ladies. <laughs> How old are you? I really am. No <laughs> bones about it. Just moments away from talking to a couple of, uh, well, I guess three girls, three women from The Apprentice. Hearing more about the uh, behind-the-scenes negotiating that has been going on with the three girls from The Apprentice. And it's... Oh, uh, Forget about it. It doesn't sound too good, actually. You think this was a Hollywood's elite yeah, coming what, here? Yeah, Birdman, what's going on? So, you think Julia Roberts was coming in. Right, you'd think Julia Child, even. Okay. So what? what is going on with these girls? She's a big well, name. They'll be here in about ten minutes. We don't want them on the show. You How did this happen? You think Barbara was coming in? Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, we had to send a car for them, and they're only maybe four or five blocks away. We've never sent cars for never. anybody. I... That's that's not true. We sent that fabulous limo service by Anthony there that would never show up. Remember his limo oh, service? Oh, yeah, yeah, I limo that. Ant. Like I said, we uh, never sent the car yeah. for anybody. I walked by Town Hall, my glorious night. We remember Town Hall back a couple years ago? It was a sold-out show. You guys supported April me. 19th? April 18th. They hacked. And it was a fantastic, one of the best shows ever, and I'm waiting for, had my parents. I said... This was the official limo company of the Opie and Anthony program back yeah, in the day. that's how good we were with getting cars. Yeah. And my parents took a train in. To see the show, so I'm like, I'm gonna get him a limo back. And this was uh, when you were just starting to really take it to the next level. I mean, it was a huge sold out show. It was a really big deal. Fourteen hundred people. I can't get two spots at the cellar on New Year's Eve this year. Only one, but I saw a town hall. Aww. You invited, uh, yeah, the whole family, and they took a train in, and then what happened? Well, um, at the end, I said I'm gonna get them a limo back, and Anthony originally tells me, "Well, I can't copy you. That's only for Opie and Anthony." And I'm like, "All right, you well, know, I, well, I told you guys this back then, and you're like, you know what? We'll just shred them on the radio." Yeah. And somebody called him. He's like, oh, "I'm sorry about." That. He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you a car. I'm like, I'll tip the guy. He's like, you just tip him. Like, I know, I'm not, I know, social etiquette. Yeah. And we stood outside for an hour waiting for the car. His big was... night, and 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 after the show, he's waiting for the limo with his parents. Probably even bragging, hey, mom and dad, yeah. special night. I got you something a little special. Oh man, your limo should be uh, pulling up any moment now. Hour later, everyone is gone. I'm still hanging with Norton, and and he's just livid, and his parents are just. Kind of wondering what the hell All is going on. All embarrassed for their son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tried to be Mr. Big Hollywood, and it's still little fat tits, isn't it? <laughs> it's still suburban fat tits. <laughs> Jimmy, maybe if one limo doesn't show up, you could get us another one. You know, replace it with a limo that actually shows up. <laughs> Dr. Phil's limo shows up, I bet. All right, so what's going on with the girls from The Apprentice, Eric? Mm -hmm. They should be here any minute. I know, but they, they just have attitudes. The one girl has an the attitude. The one girl wouldn't let us talk to the other two girls. She was being... What? Yeah, she wouldn't let us talk to the other two that are on the list. Why, there. Hawk? Just, because she was uh, in charge of them, and she was uh, the one organizing all of this, yet she was too busy to talk to me about organizing any of this. So it went between here, back to D.C., back to here, to our lawyers, oh back to here, and then finally, as of yesterday, it was confirmed. Hey, Wings, what time are they getting here? Be here any minute. All right. Wings. All right. 
So. And then she wouldn't like uh, sign the paperwork. No, that was the big hassle. I told him there's just some basic paperwork you have to sign to allow them in the studio. We're not signing anything, and she's just getting this whole attitude. So I said, "Well, then you can't come on." And then she started saying, "Well, NBC is going to be really pissed at you, and this looks bad for you." I said, "We don't work for NBC. Who We're not trying to do NBC. anything bad to NBC." And NBC has been pissed at us for years ever since yeah, we got well, the girl she... to flash live on the Today Show. And first of all, NBC understands paperwork because they make you fill out a, a, a mini contract when you do. They understand and paperwork. Tell someone from NBC, someone, one of your talent wants to come on our show, but they refuse to fill out paperwork. Well, we're NBC. We stand behind no paperwork. No. No, I'm sorry. How, does she even work for NBC? She says, that, I think till Thursday, till once the Thursday, show's over, right. it's done. You're a game show contestant. Wait, this is uh, this year's Apprentice? Yeah, that's oh, this okay. year's. Now, let's not prejudge. They might be very nice. You never, I know, because now I'm all riled up. But they may be great. She may just she may have been dealing with some horrible situations. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, I've done some radio on the road. It's awful. So maybe she's had some bad experiences all right. and is a bit jaded. Fair enough, sir. Fair enough. Ben's giggling like an no, idiot. No, Poe hates her, too. Poe had to deal with her on the phone. Too. I mean, everybody's been involved in this whole oh, disaster. Full body yeah, cavity, Poe's sir. got the right ta-ta, but the wrong ho-ho. <laughs> mm -hmm. Downhill Racer the Trucker. What's up, Downhill Racer? Downhill Racer? Is he there? You got the phone right open? No, nope. no Press the button, Ope. Shut up. All Downhill right. Racer? Yes, sir. Hey. Hey, you guys keep saying that you're having a horrible show. Last week during the free play, you guys said you were doing the worst show you had ever done. And I was laughing so damn hard about ran off the road. Oh, thank you, man. All right. I this feel... Show today's, I... This show today is great also. I mean, you guys got to quit putting yourself down. I enjoy the programs when we're just bullshitting in here. I yeah. do I. It's like having a big old family over the radio. And before I wear out my welcome, eject, eject, eject. Bye, fella. There he goes. All right, he's gone. Another trucker that uh, kept it short. It's I amazing. like that trend. No, they're starting to get it. They're starting to get it. Less time on the phone is uh, is more gooder when you're calling this radio show. Let's uh, say hi to Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, hey, how you guys doing today? Good. How you guys doing? Hey, uh, you, you got to get those celebrity whores in there so little Jimmy can peel the makeup right off their crusty faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's the, the, the gasser coming? I don't want any pressure for gas. If one comes, it comes. I was just giggling at the prospect. By the way, yeah, what's I, funny. I know how much it stunk before after the Lysol got sprayed. They would just be revolted. <laughs> By the way, Anthony. Yeah. If we do go to the phone today when the uh, Apprentice Girls are on the show, I, I, I ask the listeners for serious questions only. Oh, serious just questions serious only. Serious questions only for the uh, the fine ladies from the Apprentice show. That's no, right. No monkey business. No monkey business, just serious questions only from our listeners. That's Pick right. Pick up that phone, no horsing around. We That's don't want right. any horseplay. No. That's right. Just nice, serious questions only. Legitimate questions, right, Ope? Legitimate Serious questions. Only. Calling up just for the sake of, uh, I don't know, tricking them into uh, looking foolish. Right. We don't want that kind of thing. Absolutely not. We want respect and serious inquiries. And those silly Peterson references. Let's wait till tomorrow oh, with those. There please. you go. Tom in Jersey. How you doing, guys? Hey. Hi, Tom. Glad you're back. Thanks. Good to be back, Tom. <laughs> I think you guys should do some kind of apprenticeship for the ladies on the show today. Oh, like, you're uh, you're bordering on wacky radio. You mean have them do something for the show, a la The Apprentice? Exactly. Maybe they could go get us uh, coffee. Oh, or maybe I could put on a bad wig and they could all blow me for a spot on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, what's up? Hey, do me a favor. Don't let these girls in the studio today. No. Where's Mister Paul? Wow. I, will give me, I will pay Mr. Paul anything in this world to snap that little fucking Stacy bitch's neck off. Why you don't I, like Stacy? Oh, she's a little control freak, little bitch lawyer. Oh, really? Oh yeah, forget about it. And 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 uh, and Ivana, mm -hmm. what a, stu a stupid chink. Forget about it. Oh, Jesus. That's that's not very no nice at all. To, uh, no, bring any it's race. Ivana. Race. <laughs> When you get that little Stacy in the studio there, you're going to see, I mean, the seeds are going to be flying, bro. You know, Opie, just because a guy like this doesn't like them, doesn't give anyone an excuse to, you know, call up and, and make references to maybe Steve's burning clothes in the uh, calls or, you know. Yeah. I don't worry, I'll like have a Jim different name in about or, half an hour. We or may Monster want to... Monster Rain. <laughs> hey, Steve, can we get the volume turned down out there? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're all, they're oh, all off. Oh, good. They're all off out there. Are the girls here? Yes, yeah. 
Oh, good. Oh, they've arrived. Do they look happy and peppy and ready for the program? <laughs> mm. Eric and Ben are looking at each other. What's up, Eric? Mm. Just it's like they're hearing, like, oh, okay. Oh, really? Jim's bubbling like Krakatoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I know, like usual, I'm going to let everybody down. Girls are here, and I hear they're, uh... They're very nice. We got uh, nice. three girls from The Apprentice entering the studio. We have Elizabeth, Ivana, and Stacy R. Where are the serious uh, questions uh, only phone calls? Yeah, well, they're, they're still calling. Oh, okay. They're calling. We're screening. We're looking for questions uh, uh, that we could ask the ladies. Serious questions only today, right? Right. Sure. So why don't we uh, bring them in the studio here? Bring the girls When in. is Gene Simmons calling? 9.30, I think. 9.30? I yeah. thought it was 9. No, no, 9.30. What, they were 9. What time is Gene Simmons calling? 9.30. 9.30? 9.30 for Gene Simmons. She's making her pose just like the picture of Hey guys, Hi. how are Hello. you? Hey, good. How are we have you? two mics for three girls. Sorry. All right, we'll share. So you guys okay. could like figure out, you know, what's going to work for you. Half a mic. Half, Half a mic microphone. each, right? So it's uh, Elizabeth, Stacy, yes, and Ivana. 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 I'm sorry, oh, okay. Ivana. Well, it has the I. I V. I was thinking yeah, Ivana. Yeah. Ivana. And they're from the <laughs> they're from the Apprentice, a show I got to admit I've never seen. <laughs> It's okay, you're not the first. No, it's getting, you know, the show is doing great. We've never seen it either, so, so it makes all of us. We're yeah. better off if you don't watch the show. I didn't watch last week. What season is it? Is this the first, this is the second season? Second season. Yeah. Yeah. Second season, and all three have been uh, fired. You, you guys all got booted? Almost 16 people at this point have been fired. <laughs> How many are Almost left? 16, 15 and a half. Was Donald nice to you? No. No? Is he a dick? <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I met him once. He was really mean to me. I asked for a picture. We, we don't talk about Donald's dick. Why? Ooh. Like wow. I kind of like that. Out of the gate. I like naughty. that. Naughty. Very naughty. naughty. Yeah, he We're was not kind of, going down that path, Elizabeth. He was very mean to me when I met him, so I was wondering if he was mean to you. He's just a caricature of himself. He's just like the most extreme form of him. Everything is, <laughs> that's what I think. I think he, everything is exaggerated. Okay. And that, that's, what make, that's what makes great TV. Yeah. He's the biggest and the best. Yeah. Right. And everything is in the, the most industry. biggest and the best. Are we, yeah, are we still <laughs> talking about his dick? Are you all lawyers? All of you lawyers? No. No, no Stacy's a lawyer, right? Yes. And what, what what did you guys do before The Apprentice? I own my own marketing consulting firm. Wow. Yeah. What did you market? Mostly consumer products. Very good. Um, I spent the last five years in venture capital. Investing in technology. Companies. Oh my God, we got smart girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why I invite these ladies. We're in. not used to having smart girls in the studio. <laughs> Usually, when we ask that question, we don't get answers like that. <laughs> no, I've we been don't. stripping for five years. <laughs> what is venture capital? What is that? Um, we provide capital for startups. So, if an entrepreneur has an idea, we sort of evaluate the idea, see if it's going to be a big opportunity, and then you know, if it works, you invest in it. Give them money. Yeah, okay. give them money. Mm. And didn't you graduate like top of your class too at MB in your MBA program? Uh, she's pointing to me, Elizabeth. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I graduated top of my class. Didn't How think about she you? She was Stace? talking to Jim Norton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I dropped out. You know, suicide attempt in high school. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> 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 they think you're kidding. Ouch! You want to see the scars on his arm? No, Elizabeth, you got the boot first. Oh no, Stacy did. Why did they kick you off? I, I I know he fires people. That's his big thing. But I've never seen the shows. Why did he throw you off? I think he was just looking for someone to take a risk, and I was not going to go out there and just blatantly disregard what my project manager was doing. I mean, my project manager was slacking. He wasn't really doing much, and I just kept complaining about it. They didn't like that. No, but at, at the end, you, you were like, I would love the opportunity to be, a, to be a PM. Like, you were like, I will step up to the plate. Give me the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I, I did that, but it was a little too little too late. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I got to go party for a month afterwards. It sounds like our Washington meetings. Yeah. It's like corporate talk. I'm not used PMs to listening. And, and I'm not used to listening to smart girls manager. talk. Oh, project manager, PM. Oh, it's the sorry, same yeah. thing. Sorry, sorry. Abbreviation. Yeah, could you dumb it down for us and our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> they might be a little too smart for our audience. Uh, and what? Who is your project manager? It was that time. It was Wes. And that's another contestant. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, he he's like your boss or something. Basically, or the way it works is that one person on each team is nominated to lead the task, mm -hmm. and they dole out orders and. People are supposed to, supposed to follow them, and whether or not they follow them, it's up to them. Bless you. <laughs> Jimmy, don't mind him, a little hepatitis. Then my, and, uh, and basically, if you the team that wins gets a prize, and the, the team that loses goes to the boardroom, and one person's fired at the end. Right, okay, so the winning team doesn't have to worry about getting thrown off. Exactly. Like, uh, 
the immunity idol. <laughs> they, all, they all basically, come on, all basically have the same angle going, you know. It's true. It's like Survivor or something, yeah. Yeah, the only difference this season was, last season they didn't have exemption, which is like immunity from yeah. Survivor. So this season it was different because if you won, then the project manager would have exemption which is just immunity i gotta ask a question mm. too when you win you get the job right that's basically you guys are fighting now the guy that won last year how much money does the, the job pay was it a guy who won yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I, we don't I, know his name we don't I know, want I love it. it but it's I good that it. you assumed it was a guy well, I, I, i'll tell you how no 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 hold on there gloria all right i actually <laughs> i saw him in the same day that trump blew me off they said that's the guy that won uh, last year so uh -huh. I, they someone pointed back it out pedal, to me. Back pedal. No, at the Trump roast, I was there. I'm you know, very popular friends. But I wanted to know, like, what kind of pay? How, is it a high paying job, or is it uh, what, what? What is it? Hundred grand a year, two hundred grand a year, or two fifty? Oh, okay, and and nice. for a lot of people in this group, it's a pay cut. Really? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You guys uh, making a lot of cash? Some people. Nice. Some people. Yeah. <laughs> I think his name was her. For her, it's a pay no, cut. No, I mean no, but I mean there are people who have been practicing for five years. There are people who have been out in the work world. You're for a lawyer. Years. Yes, I'm an attorney. You're an attorney. You you went through everything and you've practiced law. Yes, I'm currently practicing. Currently practicing what law. What kind of law? I do corporate work. I, I work on hedge funds. Oof. Hedge funds. Bottom line is don't argue with Stacy. I guess not. <laughs> don't argue with any of these girls, actually. So I was on the phone with someone the other day and they're like, oh, you can't argue with an apprentice, can you? <laughs> it's really the bottom yeah. line. So hedge funds, uh, those, those are the guys that kind of, I don't know what they do, but I know they make a, this has some, I just know hedge fund people make a lot of money. A lot of money. We know nothing. I know. <laughs> Hedge fund, you sell bushes? I really am stupid. <laughs> Uneducated boob I am. And then who got kicked off next? Elizabeth? Yeah. And that was me. And why did you get kicked off? I had a mutiny on my hands. A mutiny? Yeah. The team decided to kind of conspire and, and not do what, what we needed to do for the task. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I was the odd one out, I got fired. Were you the project manager? I was the project manager. Ooh. Now, how'd you yeah. get that? Huh? How'd you get that job? Uh, picked it out of a hat, I think, that time. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe it was based on skills or something. No. No? No, but it was actually Anybody? a marketing task, which is kind of what I do. So mm. it it was a cool task for me anyway. And was your team uh, up for the challenge or no? Uh, well, you could ask Ivana. She was on my team. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ivana, you were one of the ones that kicked her off? <laughs> she was one of the ones that, that conspired against me. Well, to be fair, <laughs> Chris Arisa, who's another contestant on the show, and I... Um, we're strongly opposed to doing the coup, uh, uh, but there is. Um, it was split. It was sort of an interesting episode because we had all these. See, characters. I don't know this because I wasn't there. Obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, they were doing it. We had, all, you know, we had all these characters on our team, and Raj, who is another character. I'm sorry, contestant <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he's very into like the military, and he thinks he's a general. He thinks he's living in the 1800s, like in Civil War times, and so he's like Napoleon's his idol. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so the guy is like, forget this. We're staging a coup, and he just, you know, was like this plan of attack came on the whiteboard. You know, he erased everything that Elizabeth had written down, and was like, we're doing this. So yeah, it was pretty. Uh, but at that dramatic. point, it, it didn't really. I mean, you know, it, it's it's about getting the next next person fired. It was less about you know getting the marketing right than mm -hmm. it was about kind of who to. Is this what your radio show would be like if you had one? Because I heard you girls want it like a radio show. Are uh, we right here? Yeah, this? no, we were, no, we were talking about, about different. We were no? talking about different topics actually. Really? For the radio show? Like, yeah. I, I, like what? Oh, I have a question too. I want to ask him one question before. Oh, go ahead, Jimmy. Who was the one that got fired for saying something like anti-Semitic or whatever? What Jennifer. Oh, Christopher Gen C. Oh. Gen C. Gen C. She'll never work yeah. in New York again, I don't think. Oh, boo. Was, was she like Ow. a... It's a fact. She needs to move. Ow. Was, was she like a real... Was she a creep or was she just nice who got misquoted? Uh, it depends on who you ask. Well, the C <laughs> isn't from her last yeah. name, Jimmy. <laughs> Define creep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys dealt with her, right? You were on uh, You were on the show with her. Yes. She has a difficult What'd she do? Okay. Look, I feel really bad that she got fired from her real job after it's the fact. That's, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, oh, but did? you know what? You have to pay attention to what you say that's on TV. That's true. The whole world's watching, and if you make one wrong move in the wrong direction, you're screwed. You you're going to pay for years. it. You're going to pay for it. That's true. <laughs> what uh, What did she say? She said something like, cheap Jewish women, something bad. About we were Basically, the task was to start up a restaurant, and mm -hmm. the fir our first customers were 
these two women. I don't know if they were Jewish. I'm Jewish. I don't know if they were Jewish. There were no yeah. identifiable features. I mean, they weren't wearing a big star. It was Friday. It was Shabbat, okay? Yeah. I mean, you really don't, we don't know. So, but anyway, she identified them in her mind as Jewish, and she called these, she said that they were cheap Jewish women. Fat. No, fat, fat. Cheap, she said cheap too. Like New York Jewish cheap, women or something Ju like that? New yeah. York Jewish cheap, women. Cheap, fat New York Jewish women. But Mel Gibson yeah. should be applauded or, yeah, with something oh. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she could go work for him. But to be fair, like, the, it, the episode had blown that statement out of proportion because it Definitely. wasn't central to our discussion in the boardroom yeah, at all. Yeah, it seems like it, editing it, is it uh, really handy with that, mm. with, with reality shows. Like, they edit a lot of stuff to make it look like you said stuff uh, and had a little more meaning to what you said than you really meant. And It never came up in the boardroom. It's true. I mean, I never brought it up. It la the conversation lasted, like, three minutes. We really didn't understand what was exactly said until they showed it on TV. But then you watch the episode, and it sounds like we're fighting about it for like 15 minutes see now are there other instances where maybe you said something and then you watch the episode and go oh my god that was like a passing thing every and episode i think deal. the one where, where maria sends me away or whatever because i'm useless was it was another one <laughs> i don't know it was the fashion task <laughs> useless? Oh, and oh, she oh, she's it, she basically <laughs> sends me away because she or on the show it appears that she sends me away because i don't know i'm useless but in reality, she sent me away to do interviewing of the buyers, which is what I do for a living. And it was a really yeah. important thing for the task, and it ended up really helping us win. It's so, so. funny that a lot of the time people are saying, well, where were you? You weren't even there. You weren't even doing, doing anything. The whole point of the fact of the matter was that we were always divided up into groups, and we were doing other things. I mean, you can't do everything all together. Right. Anyway. Now, uh, earlier, I was asking you, what would you do if you had a radio show and you're not talking about The Apprentice? Because I, I know that we kind of heard that you were kind of pitching some well, show idea. My idea... I mean, I, I was thinking about this, and I think that radio needs something fresh and new, similar to The View, but not quite there, because I think that we need something younger, something a little more refreshing, maybe a little sexier. Um, so oh, sexier. I like let's, that. Let's hear more. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I pitched this idea. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> See, look, he's so excited. <laughs> no, that's, like, that's, that's 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 than the view. no, that's not that's excitement that's on that's Norton's face. I don't know. I ordered a chai and this is coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Okay. What do you mean by sexier? I'm. I mean, it's. I think that I'd be more excited to watch something where young women are talking about their views on dating and on sex and on everything. I think. <laughs> Jimmy, why is he laughing so oh, hard? No, What's so funny? Dude. You don't like our idea? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I, think, I think he may be lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> I just got nervous. What a despicable human being. Oh, I'm no. the one standing next to oh. him. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Someone open the door. I just got nervous. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think those are for? <laughs> These girls are so hot and yeah, they are. Fuck. I'm sorry. You effing <laughs> farted in front of Did you hear it and try to be nice? I did, but <laughs> there was no way to avoid that. It was pretty loud. Well, she was trying to be nice. Well, Jimmy's laughing here. <laughs> well, no, I just... <laughs> All right, enough already. Sorry, it, it... Cut it out over there. <laughs> There's two cans My of lights all there. Grab one. I have to apologize. For <laughs> He's literally shitting on our show. <laughs> he is an awful. He didn't, he awful didn't man. like the topic, Stacy. No, Try no, no, another no. one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just <laughs> drink farting more, in the workplace. Drink more coffee. Oh, Jim. I just got nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yvonne is trying to move oh. as far away from you as possible. <laughs> no, they're not bad. Actually, they're not bad. The Nothing. farts aren't bad. No, 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 not at all. Oh. <laughs> Disgusting. So anyway. Really busting the whole room full of guys on the radio stereotype apart, aren't you, Jim? Sorry. I apologize. All right, so the radio show. Sexier. Yeah. Talking about dating. What else? What else? Any like... Well, uh, it's kind of uh, like young, fresh, hip, like The View. Mm -hmm. But and the cool thing is we all have business backgrounds, so you're getting kind of the, pro the professional women's opinion on it. And different backgrounds. Yeah. And we don't want to make it like all about business at all, mm -hmm. but it's a different spin on kind of just the average chick that you talk to. Just to grab an out of, out of your hat a subject, what would you like to uh, discuss? Uh, well, this kind of could be a little audition kind of thing <laughs> over here. What do you think? Hey, go for it. Go for it. Well, well I, we've, we've discussed this. Go. <clears throat> well, no. I mean, well, I was going to say, um, Elizabeth actually was written up in the Inquirer 
But um, we don't. <laughs> oh, for what? For what? We it's got. We gotta be, you know, fresh about it, though. I don't want him to ask all the questions before we do it. Do it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to. Just what does to, that mean? What you just said? <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that they don't want to. I don't want to like blow our wad. It probably would be a different. Whoa! Audience. Nice. <laughs> Glad you asked her to clarify that. It's probably a different audience. To be very honest with you, it'll probably be. It, it's sometimes it's okay. Nobody's yeah. even, like listening. And go. Oh, they said the exact same thing. You know what I mean? It's cool. It, would, it wouldn't blow I think, anything. Better. I think one great topic, for example, would be like sex on the third date. Is it a major mistake or major move in the right direction? Oh, I agree. It's a waste. If it doesn't happen on the first date, <laughs> that should be the end of the relationship. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why third date? I think that's the, kind of the unwritten rule of dating. Is it really? Yeah. Is it really? It's yeah. like you put out or shut up on the, on the third date. Third date. So first date is just kind of a get so to know you. So anyone who wants to call door. Stacey, her number is uh, <laughs> 212555. <laughs> What if you go to three different places on the same night? Anything? No. Ooh, does that count? <laughs> See, Norton wants a girlfriend, no. but he's not gonna wait around to the. You're not gonna wait around to the third. Not date necessarily ever. true. I if, some, if I like somebody a lot, and especially I, not with that flatulence problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> a lot of people like that though because they think it's open and cute that I'll do it. Um, I think it's <laughs> cute. You think that's an endearing trait? It is. is it's kind of like saying? it's kind of like a smile or a wink. Um, <laughs> it shows some vulnerability and a childlike innocence. Who told you that? <laughs> that was such an uncomfortable moment. Oh, my oh, God. I knew everyone no, heard it. I feel like I'm hanging out with my 22-year-old brother. But I, no, if I like a woman, if I respect her and like her, I don't have to have sex the first couple of days. I'd hang with her. Why not? Really? So yeah. you How last... long will you wait? It depends on the person. If I really like somebody, I don't I don't need to try to have sex. So I go out with them uh, you know, five or five times whatever without sex. I mean, if, if, if I get no vibes at all, I'm not going to waste my time. Five times in a month or five times, I mean, over how long of a period? It depends on where they live. I work every night, so it's kind of hard. So it's like, you know, if I go out five times in a month or a month and a half and we don't have sex, if I really like them, that's fine. Okay, question. Are you paying all five times? Um, mm -hmm. I got to get some good uh -huh. Wait, how do you know he pays for it? We're asking if he well, can. Well, she's saying, how does he I'm assuming to get a girl to go out with him five times, he's paid at least once or twice. <laughs> get a girl to go out with you, you have to pay. Probably. You, you, well, I pay on all the dates. It depends on how much money she has. I mean, if, if she's somebody that doesn't make a lot of money, and I know I have more, it's like, I don't mind. Why not? I, I don't look at it like, here, I've bought you Okay, dinner. but the question is, does the money factor... No, no, not Influence at all. Influence the sex Not factor. at all. Well, well, I mean, mostly, but it <laughs> yeah. does, yeah. And most of the time it does. <laughs> but I mean, it's a much more direct connection. We avoid the whole dinner, you know, illusion. He Jim. hands her money at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. hands him sex. Yeah. Yeah. Honest transaction. No, the, I, I mean, that's the God's honest truth. Jim uh, likes the ladies of the evening. Yeah, I love uh, them. And real, spends a lot of money on them. A lot of yeah. cash. But a lot of cash. in a real relationship like that, I, no, I don't care if I, I don't look at it like I bought you dinner. You Why don't you tell them uh, what you like girls to do to you? What? What do you mean? You were all all brave about what farting in front of them. I'll tell anybody anything. Uh, you know, some of these ladies come over and what do they do for you? We just have sex, regular sex. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean the golden showers? Um, well, where you have to oh. wait. You like that? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Occasionally, wow. not all the time. <laughs> no, no, it's more That's than a ladies. Treat. It's more than golden showers. No, it's not. <laughs> tell them about the log dropping. No, there's no log dropping. Like, what are you talking? One steps oh. out, no one's looking. You know. <laughs> You, you can't embarrass her. Come on, brave man. You, I'm very brave. I'm just telling you. You I had like, no problem farting in front of the fine young ladies. I'll tell them what you're really are into. I happen to tell them how you like lay down plastic in your bathtub. I don't lay in the bathtub. In I lay the in the bathroom because bathroom. you don't want to mess up your He tiles. lays down plastic. He hires a girl to come over, and sometimes she'll squat over his chest. <laughs> okay, you're so lying right now. And of course he's lying. <laughs> no, no, he's no. I wouldn't lie. No, you, you girls, would lie. And you, other times, <laughs> you girls need to leave. No, you girls need uh -huh. to leave the studio knowing that that's what he does. Yeah. What? Oh, boy. I don't believe you. I swear. And they defecate. I, w I want evidence. <laughs> I want evidence. I don't believe it. I See, don't. she's the attorney. No, she I swear. That's, I need proof. That's his uh, his thing. Smell his T-shirt. His thing. <laughs> Stacy, you could go over and try it. See what he does. Thanks, but no. <laughs> no, I'm a nice guy. I'm, it's out of respect. To do that. It's not to be a pig. It's like if you lay down the plastic, if somebody tinkles on you, if a log comes out, ah, what are you gonna do? Oh, embarrass the girl? <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking? I'm, I'm telling you, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. truth. Pack of lies. It's it's the truth. It's That's it. Now is that good on a third date? <laughs> Dropping a log on on a guy's chest. <laughs> oh look, Donald's on TV. Uh, Gene Simmons. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, cool. Are you for or against uh, log droppings on your chest? Consenting adults. Consent Sounds like the name of a new band, but I like that. This is Gene Simmons from Kiss. Uh, we got three girls from The Apprentice in the studio as well, Gene. Hi, Gene. Hi. Hi, ladies. And uh, they're wow. tr they're trying to do a radio show, so they're coming in and uh, hanging with us a little bit today. Oh God, they're in hell, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because they just found Mom out that one of our guys likes uh, to get shit on. 
I <laughs> see. And they're, and they're not really buying it, but I'm telling you it's the truth. And he likes to get shit on and not just by a wife. I see. Right. Well, he, for it. he invites ladies over, and that's one of the things they do for him. Yeah. Do, do they pay him, or do, does he pay her? No, I, we, I have to pay. Really? Yeah. How, how much do you have to pay? Well, it depends on the person. I mean, I'd say about 300 normally. Someone that's for... It? Yeah, exactly. That's, thank you. It, uh, thank is you. It for always, is it always just a girl who does it? Or? Oh, yeah. I don't bring over teams of animals. Yeah, <laughs> sled dogs, just a chick. And no guys do this. Absolutely not. I'm not gay. Oh, okay, well, then I <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I don't want Gene Simmons thinking I'm gay. He's one and of my idols. Well, no, Gene, yeah, what do you I mean, think of this? Are you into it? I'm sorry? Are you into this? Not really. I enjoy uh, community sort of activity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gene is, uh, he's the Mac Daddy. Yes. He has figured out how not to get married and how to keep a woman even though he's banging other girls. How old are you, Gene? Oh. I'm 55. Whoa. And he's uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. How great is that, though? He didn't bullshit or try to hem and haw around. That's why I like, that's, that's what a rock star is, 55, and he'll still have a 20-year-old. That's still the beauty rocking. of Gene Simmons. Yes. Well, the way you do it is you add them up, you see. You have two 20-year-olds, <laughs> and, and then and then you get a 15-year-old, and then it all works out. Oh, oh, nice. And then you go to jail. Jesus, I like that. Gene. Not if you're in the right country. <laughs> I like that. Well, you get no, a 25-year-old. That, that, that is actually true, that if you go around the world, the uh, or, or even in different states, it's different different ages. It's really fascinating. That must look like something. The little pink nail polish chewed off at the tips running through his gray <laughs> chest hair. Oh, God, I'm really hungry now. Let's get a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so the girls from The Apprentice, they're going to uh, attempt to do a radio show, I do believe. So, we're... And why not? Why not is right. Yeah. They're very, very beautiful, They've too, Gene. They've got the gift of God. Thank you. Do you, like, uh, do you like the band Kiss, girls? I'm nope. sorry? A little before our time. Nope. Yeah, a little before your time. Don't know it. What kind of... you uh, never heard of Kiss? you never heard of Kiss? <laughs> nope, never heard of it. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Well, well, yes, of course I'm kidding. Everyone knows what Kiss. What kind of music do you About like, I, girls? I, you know, you I like R&B... R and B. Yeah. I like music that's not in English. What the hell that's is true. that? That's true. She likes Indian. Yeah, she likes. Oh really? I like Latin, music. Arabic music. Arabic music? Yeah. Have you ever oh. heard of Alabina? Oh, music no. that crashes planes into yeah. buildings yeah, by. Right. Yeah, jeans. All right. Well, I don't support that. I'm not saying terrorist music. There's a difference. <laughs> well, well, jeans going ugh on the phone. Good for oh, Jean. God. <laughs> oh, God. Jean, who do Jean. you listen to? Um, actually, I like the sound of women. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good answer. Good Jean's answer. All Jean. about so like Joni Mitchell. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't I don't mean musically. Yeah. I mean the music that comes out. We understand. But I want I, 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 no, sure, I want to hear though. what Gene is saying. Gene, yeah. I'm sorry. What's sorry, Gene? Go ahead. I like the music that happens when she's out of control. <laughs> you should sing in falsetto more often. <laughs> That's beautiful. With that big jeans. What, what, what are the ladies going to be calling their radio show? Yeah. Oh, you got a name for the show you want to have, girl? Ladies lunch. <laughs> Fantastic. Ladies lunch. Ladies lunch. Hot lunch. lunch. What do you want? It sounds like a porno movie. And are they doing? Are they doing a satellite show, or is it just for regular radio? They're going to try out for satellite radio, right? That's right, baby. Yeah. 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 Oh well, then you've got to have a semi-respectable. You don't want to be like Opie and Anthony. You want to be respectable. Right. <laughs> we already are. Gene. We always have had fun with you on the show, though. I know that, but I'm just saying this for the you know how show. much You know how much uh, Kiss product we have sold for you? Oh, wait a minute. You're trying to make me guilty. This is their <laughs> radio show, not yours. You guys are already doing Opie and Nancy. They can't be second best. Hey, is uh, Dimebag really going to be buried in a K Kiss coffin? Well, I'm not. I'm not going to do the jokes because that's a really serious. No, no, that's, no, but, not, no. We don't. But it's not all about the jokes on here. We have, the story came across our. Uh, that is true. Wow. The family called the band, and um, he was a fan. <clears throat> you know, he's got uh, the band tattooed on his chest. He was always a oh, wow. sweet, upstanding guy. And yes, the family has that, and <clears throat> and we respected that. Yes, of course. Do you sell a lot of those Kiss coffins? <clears throat> I told you I'm not going to play this game. You know, this is too... Uh... No, he's actually, Gene, he's not even busting your balls. He's I'm actually even... really asking you. No, I'm not going down, you know, no. I want to know how many of those you're kind of... So, um, actually, I don't know, but but yes, they are out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also uh, played some of the tape from your um, what is it? The, uh, the seminar. The seminar. The, ans the inspiration. In tongues. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the that, lecture tours. Yes. And uh, we just love your take on marriage. You want to explain the marriage thing to the girls? This could be interesting. Yeah. Oh, actually, please. all actually all women know the game. It's uh, well. Here's here's how you look at it, scientifically speaking. 
the uh, biggest cause of divorce is marriage. Yeah, <laughs> that works out. And the bi- biggest cause of death is life. I mean, <laughs> well, you know why men die younger than their wives? Because they want to. <laughs> Very nice. The only thing wrong with marriage, one of the two is a man. Yeah. <laughs> I think unmarried men die earlier than... Um... We don't care. At least we smile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love jeans. <laughs> yeah. You, you, just what you want to do is to wake up in the morning or at night and have somebody who never earned the right ask you, where are you going and where have you been? The only one who ever had the right gave me birth. And my mother stopped torturing me years ago. So that's the one part of marriage, or one of the parts of marriage that you hate, is the fact that you're going to have to explain yourself to somebody no, else. No, the only thing wrong with marriage is that biologically it's not a sound idea because the male of the species, we're told, manufactures billions of sperm every day. The female of the species only manufactures one egg or two eggs per month. Now, the only problem is that ever since we were, ever since we crawled out of the ooze we were both created from, you know, at, at creation, the female of the species has actually deluded herself into thinking that all those billions of sperm are just for her. Right. So mm-hmm. what happens with gay male couples? Are they gay disturbed? doesn't play here. I don't understand <laughs> that. You know, we're talking about... Uh, by the way, and a gay man is a different issue than gay women. Two beautiful women together is just two beautiful women. Yeah, why is that? Two ugly women together, that's dykes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is true that our society, I mean, it's more acceptable Every for women society. to be together than for guys. If you go to the jungles of Africa and you see two beautiful chicks together, you go, oh, that's pretty. I know. I mean, for example, I mean, they're passing around this Maxim issue of the girls of the apprentice. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're all, you know, in these sort of uh, Underwear. lascivious, yeah, poses and in lingerie. And because the male of the species is visually stimulated. You know, when we we look at the so so, so Gina, are, you, are, you saying, are you saying that sex seems so base? Are you saying that we're not visually stimulated? You're more auditory, oh, yeah. I think. Uh, women, no. No, I think much. that's a definition guys have given. No, that's actually incorrect. <laughs> no. I, I look what this, products so. sell. Women, women's products. Typically, how come, you know what I mean, women don't like look for guys' bulges, whereas guys, I'm just saying, it's just the way we look at things. No, Doesn't that's because it... we've never shown a bulge. You've been no, shown yeah, a bulge. Sure you have. You're on a babysitter, of course. Hey, guys. No, the, no, no, no. Hey, that... guys, the, the girls will argue until they're blue in the face, but if you look at the animal kingdom, the opposite is true. The male is full of colors and all that, and he's, he puts on a display of color and size for the female. <clears throat> the so you're supporting my argument, Gene. There's no reason in the world why breasts have to be inflamed like that. That's purely a show of display that nature provided for the male. Because you can make just <laughs> but as the, much if, milk if, as if the male <laughs> animal is more beautiful and colorful, then that means that the female animal must be the one that's visually stimulated. Well, yeah, that's a, a nice try, but in the animal kingdom, that's so, but not for human <laughs> beings. National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Discovery. <laughs> but, but he's right, though. It's not, it's not knocking women, but men are more likely to be visually stimulated than women. More likely. I, I think you guys are brainwashed. No, no. Let I, I totally know. disagree. Okay, yeah. you would. Women, women do because they think it's like, a, it's like a, a male arrogance, but it's not. It's just, it's... Well, let me ask you if this is true, and maybe the ladies can answer for all women because they can speak for all women, because Opie, Anthony, and myself can speak for all men. Get ready for this one. We're ready for the universal. Okay, here's the universal answer, and you can say yes or no. Only yes or no. Yes. Women tend to answer in paragraphs, so... Guys, stop them if they start talking. All right. When I was a child of four, I forgot to clip my toenails. No, no, yes or no? <laughs> Nothing is ever yes or no, but we'll listen. Well, unfortunately, you're on Opie and Anthony's show, and today it's got to be yes or no. See the way they're doing it? It yep. doesn't have to be right away. Gene, have you ever been married? Uh, can, no. I ask my, can I ask my point? <laughs> I was like, no. no okay. He's got here's a great how, story. Here's how it works. Two guys are talking, and two girls are talking. And one guy says to his friend, listen, I've got a blind date for you. So his friend says, what does she look like? Okay, now two girls are talking. I've got a blind date for you. So her friend says, what does he do? Okay, but, you know, that's only because guys are more ugly than women. starts right away. Blah, 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 blah. Just say yes or no. But he's right. No, if guys were just as gorgeous as women, we would say, what does he look like? He's right, though. But we Yes, you're out of order. Just yes, it's true, or no, it's not. No. You're being argumentative. It's true. Okay, they're lying on your show. No, we're sharing our opinion. Well, these we are, disagree. We're allowed to. These girls are uh, career uh, women there, uh, Gene. So that would be very interesting what a guy does. Not that their looks aren't, in, the guy's looks aren't important, but the first thing you're not going to think of is how big is his dick. You're going to think, what's he do? Is this guy something? Or, and then it all would come from there. His is he a nice guy? Has something to do with his station in life. Right. And the more money and the more position he has in life, the more attractive he is. Mm-hmm. If he comes into a restaurant and everybody says, see that guy works for the sanitation department, he's not going to get... Well, he's not going to get it as easily as the guy who comes in 
works on Wall Street, has three houses, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I asked where they went to school. I'm sorry? Yeah, see, Jean, I think, uh, you know, there are some women where that is true. I mean, you're talking to three professional women that support themselves, so I don't know, it might be a little different with us. By a lot, you know what, you're, you're, uh, and I say this just kidding around, by the way. <laughs> if the ladies in the studio are 12 years old, you've got to wait until their biological clock kicks in, and then we'll see. Uh, okay. Well, look, at here's a perfect example. I wish I didn't have my period yet, let me tell you. <laughs> it was much more fun if as well. I, what do you think attracts Donald Trump's, what, Melania, her name is? She's gorgeous. What attracts her or Marla Maples to Donald? I mean, he's not a bad-looking guy, but do you think that they, both of them are really hot women. They could definitely get better-looking guys. Well, do you think that these women are intelligent? Let's Would start with that question. answer the guy's question instead of asking your own? <laughs> so, look, okay, let's, let's, isolate, let's isolate the variable then. If, if there's someone Don, looking like Donald Trump and then, you know, having the same amount of money as he does... Right. Um, so it's I Donald, Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. And then there's somebody who you're saying is better looking and has the same amount of money. No, that's not what was. No, that's no, not I'm saying I think a chick would. What attracts them? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, we, you're putting in the asterisk, which is has the same amount of money. Yeah. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if Donald Trump, let's use Gene's words, if, is a sanitation worker, does he have Melania? Well, just just speaking from personal experience, I think what attracts women to Donald Trump is that he has a certain charisma. Yeah. He has a charismatic a confidence and a charisma that it's goes. It's called yeah. nine zeros. He has nine laughing, zeros. Man. Oh, these girls are so full of it. Oh, Wait, in, in all fairness, the women that he, that he has been dating or he's married are not necessarily, I mean, lo looking for like an ultimate intellectual probably. I mean, Ooh, come just, on. You know, it's true. I think, I think, you know, like, okay, Donald Trump, Matt, you, know, art, you know, art of the deal or whatever. I think he's also, you know, probably perfected art of flirting. Like, I think he flirts very well. I mean, he does. I mean, he flirts. He doesn't flirt well enough to land Melania if he's God, a sanitation guys, worker. Guys, yeah. you, have to, you have to quit because the, it's not a fair playing field. They're not playing honesty here. They're playing, but some of us are different. You know, that's not what the question was. Well, so, you know, you so basically, Gene, be because you don't agree with us, we're, t we're lying? Is that no, what you're I'm saying? No, I'm saying that you actually agree that uh, there are women out there who are different. That's true. But the guys are only talking about predominantly what seems to be the case. That's all. We're not talking about there exceptions, exceptions to the of rule. course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Gene, is, you, you've never been married, right, Gene? Or you tried it once can't, a long time? No, I've never done it. No, yeah, I okay. can't. I wasn't, I I wasn't sure if you did it a, a real no. long time ago. No, he uh, he's been he's he's got the best relationship ever. I have to say though, the, the exceptions to the rule for us are those other women that you're talking about because um, we, uh, well, we hang out with women who are professional and well educated. The, then you have to take a look at the statistics, blah blah blah. Of course, but you know what? You, the best when you meet women who are uh, as bright and charming as they are, if they don't want to play the honest game, let it go. You will not win. You cannot win against <laughs> these women. Let them win. <laughs> yeah, Gene's allowed to sleep with, with whoever he wants. That's great. Right, Gene? Isn't well, everyone? Uh, we life, were, life should be enjoyed every day. Well, we were talking about that, but the average guy can't live the lifestyle of Gene Simmons. Like the guy Everybody, that's, that's not true. The guy every, that's selling uh, like cars can't... It's not can't, true. He can always go next door and borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you can't tell the girl you're dating, that's like, I'm going film. to get sugar. <laughs> You know what no, I mean? No, you can't. No, no, because she's. Remember, she's only making one or two eggs per month, so she sees life through a different biological uh, eyes than the guy does. Guys are hornier, right, Gene? Well, you know, imagine there's most. Do you really think that? Yeah. Just Honestly, just, yes. just I think that. Second, just you a do? second. I think yeah, so. Imagine, oh imagine, imagine the, the most men. sensitive part of your body keeps <laughs> rushing against your pants leg every step you take. Of course, we're yeah, more around. I agree with that. And their, you know, their button is hidden. They're going, why do you guys think about sex all the time? Well, take your little button and stick it way out there and just brush it against your skirt every, every I completely, <laughs> I have to just say, I completely disagree. I know so many women who are sex obsessed. A lot and, of them are. You're I right. mean, and thinking about it a lot more than a lot of guys. But again, Gene is saying as a general rule, social and he's science, right. Well, as a general science. rule, the men talk about it more, but doesn't no, mean that the women not, are thinking about it. No, it's not us. It. We're just repeating information that's told to us. Social scientists say that men think about it every eight seconds. Women don't. Why, and why is prostitution so built like on females yeah. being prostitutes for men or even gay well, men being prostitutes power. for other men? That's no, about it's, power. no, it's that's not. About, I get them. It's yeah. about sex. Back win. in the day, guys, it was about power. I'm talking guys, about my own experience. I've experienced it. It's not about power. The guys had the money. Uh, Gene, I just it, love it, the fact that Jim's trying to win, though. That's guys, the best part of this. It was. But, but I'm talking about prostitution. Like, I've spent a lot of cash on prostitutes. I mean, and I mean a lot of cash. And, and I understand what they're saying, but it's not about power. I don't degrade them. It's not like I suck it and get out. Well, no, no, no. It's not to, about no, sex. Well, to Elizabeth's point, I mean... If Rape is about at, power, but not, not well, that. No, no, because I'm just saying it saying... originated when men had money and women had something to sell.
That's how it ori- So it was about and power. Men, and men couldn't get the sex, so they figured, hey, t- maybe it's about power for the women. Hey, look, give me your money, and I'll give you what you it's really about want. all of that. All right, well, then yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, it kind of washed each other out. Hey, issue. Hey, I mean, hey, Gene. Yeah. yeah. Sum up why guys should not get married, the whole divorce thing and losing your money. I, I was never espousing that. I'm saying that life should be a choice, and you should actually say what you mean and mean what you say. And if a guy ever takes the oath, I'm at, I actually believe in the Catholic notion, which is if you ever dare take that oath that says you're going to die in the arms of the person you're married, you know, uh, 50 years from now in sickness and in health for, you know, for sicker or poor, richer, all that stuff, you should be held accountable. But everybody lies, you see. They stand in front of their beloved and their God and all that stuff, and they say, I'm going to do this. And statistics tell us that over 50% within two years split. And I'm going, wait a, wait a second. Both of you took an oath. What happened to that oath? Well, we changed our mind. And so I believe in saying what you mean and meaning what you say. And the reason I, I can't take that oath is because it's fantasy. And I don't like breaking oaths. So I'm not saying to anyone, don't get married. I'm just saying that if you do get married, you should be held accountable and stay there in her arms for 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> I support that. Yep. Yep. The same person every day. That's beautiful, Gene. That's right. That's, That's beautiful. Agreeing with Gene Simmons. Oh. What's, the, but what's the name of the, uh, the DVD, by the way, the uh, inspiration? Speaking in Tongues. And where can people get it? <laughs> in stores. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. In stores everywhere. Sure. I, uh, I downloaded it and just burnt it to a disc. I'm watching it. <laughs> I'm kidding, Gene. Don't send your goon squads after me to in beat my head in. and on the internet. Well, they wouldn't beat you. They just want to pay my mom some more money so that she can buy another house. Gene, what's the DVD <laughs> about? Um, actually, about two years ago, the Australian promoters asked me to come down and just lecture, you know, get up there and tell my life story. And I have peculiar notions about, you know, life as we know it, the, the sort of pure honesty that doesn't exist between the male and the female of the species. Because we lie to each other every single time we see each other. You know, when guys, by the way, when guys talk with each other, they tell the absolute truth. I'm going to kick you in the balls. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. As soon as you meet a girl, you have such nice hair. What fine were no, you? No, I think I think that's true. I think yeah, I we have to true. change. We have to speak two languages. We have to speak truth to each other, and then we have to speak flowery language to uh, women. Now. Women want men to be in touch with their feminine side, but guys don't care if you're in touch with your masculine side. We just want you to be girls all the time. So women can be women with each other and with men. You can just be feminine. We have to be Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, how about that? Cannot argue that point. No, I think that's beautiful in personal mm-hmm. relationships, and maybe that's why we get so confused in business. Maybe well, that's true. you can't have, you have it both ways. Part of the you can't walk into the boardroom. You can't have it both ways. You can't walk in to the boardroom with lifted and separated outfit with perfume and beautiful right. lipstick right. and expect us who are visually stimulated to not think about the other stuff. Right. Yeah. Wow. Don't wear the makeup. Don't wear the heels. Come in. You know. See, Matt, but then we can't be, quote, women. That's a different environment. Well, you want us to be in touch with our feminine side. How about a little truck driver nod? <laughs> you know, be in touch with the masculine side. That's right. And Gene, uh, all coming together what's your whole theory on cash? You, you were saying in these tapes, cash is good. Well, we all, you know, because America is a remnant of the Puritan ethic, we grow up, uh, you know, victims of all these sort of archaic notions. By the way, and I, I make no, uh, you know, sort of judgments on any of this. If you want to believe in it, that's fine, too. Uh, we all grow up learning that uh, love is the most powerful force in the universe, and I wish it were so. You know, I, I didn't make up these rules, but it's not. Money is the most powerful force in the universe, and I'll prove it to you. All right. It, it really is. I love and it's not a romantic notion. It's just life as we know it, which is... Which because is of say, prostitution. Let's, let's say... <laughs> you can buy sex. <laughs> well, let's say... Let's say it, well, it can buy anything you want. It's the currency of life. Let's say you have, you're a mother and you have a child, and, of course, the first thing you want to do is to feed that child and to nurture it and so on. No matter how much you say, I love you to the child, the child will perish unless you have money to, to sustain it, which is shelter, cl- food, clothing, and so on. So before, before love, you have to have the money. Now, it's true that we all prefer love. It's true that uh, we wish the world were different, but it's actually not true that love is the most powerful force. Money is the most powerful force. Money is the currency. Money is the expression of love. I know it's a bizarre notion, but it is. Well, the truth of the matter is, in this society, you can't do without money, but you could probably do without some love. Although there are people that would say, <laughs> oh, wow. 
They deserve a radio show. <laughs> They're actually doing a pretty good job. Can you man. buy every, love? That's of course. Question. Well, <laughs> men, men Jim have buys to. love every night. And love. Men. Although I will say though that money's powerful, but love is what motivates you to want to go out and get the money to provide. So maybe you could you could well, appeal to make an argument talking, too. I wasn't talking about the motivation. I was just saying what is so. Money is really it. And that's okay. And if we get over that notion, then we get, okay, if money's the currency of life, my mother needs a hip operation, uh, you know, I need to feed I'm my child. I'm going to get in there with love. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if it's money or power, because what does money really give you? It gives you power. Money is power. Without money, you don't have power. Women have a version of power, but it's, very, it's only if men are in the mood. Only if you use the money correctly, though. I'm sorry. It doesn't well, that's mean, another it doesn't issue. Imagine, imagine the bus of life pulls up and the door opens and you go to the guy, I love you. That bus driver is not letting you on the bus. You'd be surprised if they're hot. <laughs> yeah. we could, I bet you we could finagle our way into the well, bus. <laughs> well, women have, you know, it's the oldest profession in the world and it's not prostitution, it's sex. Women have figured out a long time ago that they can trade. Well, you've My, got some experts here in terms of using sex to sell. Let me tell you that. Well, it's true. You <laughs> can do that. Why are you from doing so? <laughs> you girls? Did you watch the show? Of course I did. Okay. Um, I, I think actually we're clear examples of women not using sex to sell. All right. Sell. Yeah. Listen, we only got like uh, 40 seconds left in the show. Gene, what do you want to plug today? Just, I'm, I'm done plugging, but usually it's women. <laughs> <laughs> Just that uh, the DVD that's in all the stores now, right? Oh yeah, I mean hey. every, everything is great. If anybody's interested, just log on to kissonline.com, and we're going back out on tour in the spring. We're going to do uh, Red Square in Moscow and Hyde Park, and you know lots of fun stuff. And we're, we're hearing rumors you might franchise the band. I've heard that rumor too, but it's not true. Okay. Oh. And, oh. and really fast, the girls, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Yvonne, and Stacy, are anything to promote from? Just the girls from The Apprentice? Yeah, um, I think we all have individual websites. You can check me out at Ivanama.com. StacyRotner.com. ElizabethGerose.com. EatABullet.com. <laughs> and Eat a bullet. And, that's it. And, uh... Program okay. complete. Gene. Yeah. That, that was it. Sorry. Yeah. Jeremy in Kansas. What's up, Jeremy? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. I just had to say, when Jimmy busted that one out on those girls yesterday, those little crazy... Oh, uh, the Apprentice girls had to smell Jim's Thank farts you. yesterday. That was really funny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That, was, that was funny. Thank the, you. The one, um, Ivana, I guess. Yeah, Ivana. That one? Ivana, yeah. Ivana. She, uh, she tried to make like she didn't hear Jimmy's fart. It was so loud. I mean, there was no missing it. And it sounded wet. It was like... <laughs> yeah. And these are the girls, the type of girls you just don't fart in front of. No. You know what I mean? No, no. And she didn't miss a beat. She kept talking. Like right through it, and I knew she heard it. She was trying to be a professional about yeah. it, but she she started to she started to nudge over to the other girl. Yeah, and then we had to acknowledge it. It was really funny. They they were much nicer than I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be awful. Hold on, no, that kind of ruined it. Yeah, they turned out to be really cool. Yeah, because we got slammed on the email. Why didn't you guys, you know, rip into them? They were nice, dude. They were nice, and they actually handled themselves well, and they gave us okay radio in the whole exchange with Gene Simmons. I thought it was all right, so yeah. we we didn't. Uh, we didn't go after him. You yeah. can't just slam somebody if they're being nice and there's no reason for it. Then you'll be yeah. a dick. It's like, for what? Yeah, right. if they were being nasty, well, we would have laid into him. But they were being nice and kind of wrecked it. That gasser, I really thought, would send things in a bad tone. I was trying to push that out, but I was waiting for a quiet moment. Yeah. And then nothing. The one's like, I think he's lactose intolerant. Yeah. The, she wanted they, to help. They took, <laughs> your, they took your fart like they were, you know, they were champs. Dude, they're in, in, I guess that could have turned world. the interview and then we could have went after him. But, uh, you know, after they smell your fart and they're cool about it, what are we going to do after that? I, I dropped two of them. The second one's when she finally mm -hmm. commented.